Hello and welcome back to our Tuesday story times. I'm so glad I get to be with you guys again this week. I am teacher Julia for those who don't know. Um, so Sunday we talked about Palm Sunday. And if you remember, uh, that was when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and people were waving palm branches and singing Hosanna, Hosanna, um, because they were so excited that he was riding into town and they thought that he was going to become this physical king and take over these bad rulers. He was going to take over everything and make everything good again, right? But that was not God's plan. That was not what Jesus was put on earth for. Um, and a lot of times God's plans look different than ours. And maybe our plans look good. Like, why wouldn't we want Jesus to be king? That's a good plan. But God's plans are better. So today, I actually have two stories for you. Um, I know that might be a little bit of longer time. If you have a hard time focusing for that long, I know that sometimes I can get a little restless if I'm sitting for too long. Welcome to grab maybe a piece of paper, some crayons or markers, and maybe draw a picture of, of the story I'm telling. Uh, and if that helps you focus, that's awesome. Feel free to do that. Um, so this takes place um, in the week, within the week after Palm Sunday. Um, so Jesus had just rode into Jerusalem, um, and this is the week during that week, what's going on. So our first story, um, once again, we're in the Jesus Storybook Bible. If you have this book of Bible at home, feel free to follow along. Um, we will be on page 286. Our first story is called The Servant King. This is the story of the Last Supper. It'll be from Mark 14 and John 13 through 14. So those are two of the, the gospel books that we have in the New Testament. All right. It was Passover. The time when God's people remembered how God had rescued them from being slaves in Egypt. Every year they killed a lamb and ate it. The lamb died instead of us, they would say. But this Passover, God was getting ready for an even greater rescue. Jesus and his friends were having the Passover meal together in an upstairs room. But Jesus' and his friends were arguing. What about? They were arguing about stinky feet. Yes, that's right, stinky feet. Now the thing about feet back then was that people didn't wear shoes. They only wore sandals, which might not sound unusual, except that the streets in those days were dirty. And I don't mean just dusty dirty. I mean really stinky dirty. With all those cows and horses everywhere, you can imagine the stuff on the street that ended up on their feet. So anyway, someone had to wash away the word dirt. But it was a dreadful job. Who on earth would ever dream of volunteering to do it? Only the lowliest servant. I'm not the servant, Peter said. Nor am I, said Matthew. Quietly, Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, picked up a basin of water, knelt down, and started to wash his friend's feet. You can't, Peter said. He didn't understand about Jesus being the servant king. If you don't let me wash away the dirt, Peter, Jesus said, you can't be close to me. Jesus knew that what people needed most was to be clean on the inside. Then oh, sorry. all the dirt on their feet was nothing compared to the sin inside their hearts. Then wash me, Lord, Peter said, tears filling his eyes. All of me. One by one, Jesus washed everyone's feet. I am doing this because I love you, Jesus explained. Do this for each other. Now, one of, his, one of Jesus' friends had made a bad plan. No one else knew what the bad plan was, but Jesus knew. And so did Judas. Judas was going to help the leaders capture Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Go on, Judas, Jesus said. And Judas got up from the meal, left the room, and walked out into the night. Then Jesus picked up some bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends. 
He picked up a cup of wine and thanked God for it. He poured it out and shared it. My body is like this bread. It will break, Jesus told them. This cup of wine is like my blood. It will pour out. But this is how God will rescue the whole world. My life will break and God's broken world will mend. My heart will tear apart and your hearts will heal. Just as the Passover lamb died, so now I will die instead of you. My blood will wash away all of your sins and you'll be clean on the inside, in your hearts. So whenever you eat and drink, remember, Jesus said, I've rescued you. Jesus knew it was nearly time for him to leave the world and to go back to God. I won't be with you long, he said. You're going to be very sad, but God's helper will come. And then you'll be filled up with the forever happiness that won't ever leave. So don't be afraid. You are my friends and I love you. Then they sang their favorite song and walked up to their favorite place, an olive garden. Our next story um, is just the next story in the um, storybook Bible. This is called A Dark Night in the Garden. Um, this takes place in the Garden of Gethsemane. From, um, it's written in the Bible in Luke 22, Mark 14, and John 18, which are three of our gospel books in the New Testament. The wind was picking up now, blowing clouds across the moon, shrouding the garden in darkness. Stay up with me, Jesus asked his friends. They said yes and waited under the olive trees, but they were tired and soon they fell asleep. Jesus walked ahead alone into the dark. He needed to talk to his heavenly father. He knew it was time for him to die. They had planned it long ago, he and his father. Jesus was going to take the punishment for all the wrong things anybody had ever done, ever would do. Papa, father, Jesus cried, and he fell to the ground. Is there any other way to get your children back to heal their hearts to get rid of the poison but Jesus knew there was no other way all the poison of sin was going to have to go into his own heart God was going to pour into Jesus's heart all the sadness and brokenness in people's hearts He was going to pour into Jesus's body all the sickness in people's bodies God was going to have to blame his son for everything that had gone wrong it would crush Jesus but there was something else something even more horrible when people ran away from God they lost God it was what happened when they ran away not being close to God was like a punishment and Jesus was going to take that punishment Jesus knew what that meant he was going to lose his father and that, Jesus knew, would break his heart in two. Violent sobs shook Jesus' whole body. Then, Jesus was quiet, like a lamb. I trust you, Papa, he said. Whatever you say, I will do. Suddenly, through the trees, a glitter of starlight flashed off steel. Into the quiet garden came whispers, muffled voices, clanking metal, and the sound of boots marching. Jesus stood up. He woke his friends. Now is the time, he said gently. Everything that was written about me, what God has been telling his people all through the long years, it's all coming true. And into the night, with burning torches and lanterns, with swords and clubs and armor, they came, an army of soldiers. Judas led them straight to Jesus so they could arrest him. Jesus was waiting for them. Peter leapt up, took a sword, and tried to defend Jesus. He sliced off a guard's ear. Jesus immediately touched the guard and healed him. Peter, he said, this is not the way. Peter didn't realize that no army, no matter how big, could ever arrest Jesus, not unless Jesus let them. 
Then Jesus, who had never done anything except love people, was arrested as if he were a criminal. Jesus' friends were afraid, so they ran away and hid in the dark shadows. The guards marched Jesus off and took him to the leaders. The leaders put Jesus on trial. Are you the son of God? they asked. I am, Jesus said. Who do you think you are to call yourself God? You must die for calling yourself the son of God. Only the Romans were allowed to kill prisoners, so the leaders made a plan. We'll tell the Romans this man wants to be our king, and then they will crucify him. But it would be all right. It was God's plan. It was for this reason that I was born into the world, Jesus said. And that concludes our story for today. We will find out what happens after that on Sunday. So our first story was called The Servant King. And servant and king are typically seen as opposites. A king typically would have a servant to do his work for him, maybe to get him food or even just to clean his kingdom, his palace. Um, the servant does what the king doesn't want to do, right? Like it was mentioned in the story, the only person that uh, was cleaning these nasty, stinky feet was the lowliest servant. Uh, and Jesus is the king, our king, right? He was sent to earth to be the king, but he was also sent to be a servant because we cannot lead without serving, and that's what Jesus taught us. Uh, so when Jesus, when he was praying in the garden with his disciples, he was pleading to God, and he was so desperate to not have to die. He knew what he was going to go through. He knew the torture he was going to be put through. He did not want to go through. He knew it was going to be so painful and so agonizing. He was pleading with God that he did not want to go. But he knew it had to happen. He knew it had to happen so that he could rescue the world. So he could rescue me. He could rescue you. He could rescue everyone that you know. He knew he had to go through all that pain and suffering. And he knew that was God's plan. That's why he was put on the earth. That's what he says at the end of the story, right? This is why I was put on the earth. Uh, and it looks so bad, right? Jesus, who just loved people and who healed people, is being killed. It looks so bad, just like what we talked about last week. How could this possibly be turned good? But we know, we know that God used it for good. So I'm going to give you our discussion questions. Again, they'll pop up on the screen after I'm done reading them, and you guys can pause the video and, and chat about them for a little bit. So my first question for you is, what are some of the dirty things that we have inside us that we need Jesus to clean? Maybe it's something that's really secret and that we're scared to tell. Maybe it's something that our parents know and we just we need help with and we need some prayer for. What are those things? Question number two is, why do you think when Peter chopped off the ear trying to defend Jesus, why did Jesus heal that guard? He knew that guard was taking him away to arrest him and to lead him to his death. Why would he heal them? Why would he heal his enemy, someone who came after him and attacked him? Why would he do that? And my last question for you is, how would you feel if you were one of Jesus' disciples right now? If you were following and, and good friends with Jesus, and Jesus had just been, he had been such a huge part of your life, and suddenly he's arrested and taken away, and you don't know why, you don't know what's happening, but you know it can't be good, and you're so, you're scared, and you run away. Well, like, how would you be feeling? What's going through your mind? What do you think the disciples are feeling during this time? So go ahead and discuss those with your with your adult, with whoever you're watching this video with. Um, and when we come back, I will tell you what our activity for the day is. All right, welcome back. I hope you had a great discussion. Um, I actually have two activities for you today if you would like to do one or the other or maybe even both, whatever you guys choose to do. So my first activity for you is to make some letters. Um, all of us are stuck in our homes right now, right? Um, 
So even our neighbors or our grandma and grandpa or our friends, we're all kind of sometimes feeling alone. We all miss our friends. We all miss the people we see every day. Write them some letters. Maybe it's an email. Maybe you handwrite and, and make some cards and draw some pictures for them. Maybe even you want to make a card for your brother or sister or mom or dad and, and slip it under their bedroom door to surprise them. Uh, showing them that you care for them and that you love them. Um, and it can make someone, it can really make someone stay to receive a, a note like that or a card like that. And our second activity, if you choose to do it, um, is within your own family, whoever would like to participate, um, to wash each other's feet and to remember that as a family, we get to serve each other. Um, we get to humble ourselves and be servants of each other in within this family. Um, so maybe you want to wash a sibling's feet or your parent's feet um, and maybe your parent wants to watch, wash yours um, just as a reminder that uh, Christ has called us to be servants and to love one another um, so let me pray for you as we go out this week Lord we thank you so much uh, as we're coming up on Easter we know the sacrifice that you made for us we know that that was not a light sacrifice we know the pain and the suffering that you went through, Lord. Um, and we thank you for that. We thank you that we were worth it. We thank you that you saw each and every one of us and said that you would do it for, for us, Lord. If it was only just for one of us, you would still do it, Lord. And we thank you for that. We thank you that your love was big enough, that your love was powerful enough to make that sacrifice for us. Um, we thank you for the gift of forgiveness and the gift of salvation that you, you've brought to us. Uh, we pray that we can show others love and kindness and servanthood as we go about our weeks, Lord. We thank you for all your sacrifices. Amen. Thank you again for joining me this week. I've had so much fun doing these stories with you, and I will see you again next week.